there's this quote I love from Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, often referred to as the father of astronautics and human spaceflight. He said, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but one cannot live in a cradle forever. When I was 10, my mom got me this book called Black Holes and Time Warps by Kip S. Thorne. It was filled with all these fascinating facts about the physics of space. Of course, back then, it was difficult for me to comprehend these complex ideas of space, travel, black holes, and gravity. So I ended up just reading the prologue and calling it a day. <laughs> but then flash forward a few years, and we spend a few weeks in Florida. And on our places to visits list was the Kennedy Space Center. I was mesmerized by all the rockets, rovers, spacecrafts, and spacesuits. That led me to go down the rabbit hole of space travel and space exploration. And the curiosity to know more about the observable universe has stuck with me until this day. I envision a future where humans become a multiplanetary species and explore the universe for habitable planets. Not because we won't like our planet anymore, but because we are explorers and we have a natural drive to explore. I envision a future where we would be able to board a spaceship where the destination is a distant planet in a galaxy far, far away, just like in our favorite movies like Star Wars. Hopefully we won't run into this guy on the way though. <laughs> But to make that vision a reality, there are still a lot of challenges we need to overcome. We can start out with human-centered challenges because we humans are designed for a life here on Earth. And as soon as we leave our planet, we're not safe anymore. A classic example is the lack of gravity in space. We don't notice this on a day-to-day -day basis, but because of Earth's pull of gravity, our muscles are kept from being weakened and our bones are being stimulated for growth. But in space, we don't have a force to push against, so we'll experience a decrease in muscle mass and bone loss as well. Another challenge we might come across are the levels of radiation we are exposed to in space. There's cosmic radiation that comes from our Milky Way galaxy, and then there's also solar radiation that comes from the sun. And if you're lucky, you might have even seen the auroras last weekend, unlike me, who was fast asleep in my bed. But if you did see them, you would have seen the results of solar radiation. And while it looks magical from here on Earth, up in space, it can be deadly. When our DNA is exposed to radiation, it can cause serious health problems. Another problem we can consider are the vast distances we have to travel to get to other planets. For example, it takes 21 months alone for a round trip to Mars. And breaking down that duration, it would consist of 18 months of traveling and then three extra months of waiting for Earth and Mars to be in a suitable location to make the journey home. This could make people go insane. There are a lot of psychological problems that can occur because of this. Depression, anxiety, social isolation, cognitive decline, communication problems, and disturbances in the circadian rhythm. These are problems that astronauts on the International Space Station today face, and they aren't even that far away from our planet. Moving on from human-centered challenges, we could also consider the challenge of creating a suitable space habitat. We humans need an environment similar to our biosphere here on Earth on any other planet we explore. To research this a little bit further, there was a study carried out in 1991 in the desert of Arizona in the United States. This is Biosphere 2, a prototype or model for an extraterrestrial space habitat. Biosphere 2 gave us some insight on the challenges that come with creating a suitable space habitat that can cater to our needs. There were eight people living inside Biosphere 2 for two years, and it was designed to be able to generate all the resources that these eight people needed, such as air, food, and water, without having to bring in external resources. However, after only a year, it failed. Biosphere 2 failed to produce enough amounts of oxygen and food for its inhabitants. But despite this failure, there are still a lot of things we learned. And even though there are so many challenges we have to overcome, we still need to explore. And that's because space travel isn't only about exploration. 
It's also about driving innovation. It's about creating new products and technologies that can benefit us here on Earth. There are a lot of products we use today that were actually initially built because of space travel. For example, most of us have a smartphone in our pocket, right? Well, the little camera on that phone, that was initially built for spacecrafts. Or we all have a favorite playlist on our phone and the wireless headsets we use to listen to our favorite songs, those were initially created for astronauts to be hands-free without wires. Or many of us are probably familiar with the brand Nike Air. Some of you might even be wearing them right now. Well, Nike Air wouldn't actually exist without NASA's suit construction technology. In fact, it was a NASA engineer who first proposed the idea for Nike Air. And finally, I saved the best for last, baby formula. <laughs> I have no brand affiliations with this product, by the way. <laughs> but NASA didn't actually invent baby formula, but they did fund a research program which found a natural source for an omega-3 fatty acid while developing life support for Mars missions. This fatty acid was previously only found in breast milk, but thanks to NASA funding this research program, it can be found in almost all powdered baby formula today. From a historical perspective, we humans have always been explorers, navigating the seas, discovering new land, and conquering the skies. A great example is the race to Antarctica. We got there in 1912, and 40 to 50 years later, we established a scientific base there. And in 1985, the existence of the ozone hole was discovered by British Antarctic survey scientists. And today we live in the space age. Space exploration is part of our curiosity and our endless drive to discover. And this drive demonstrates what we as humanity are capable of doing. It shows that things which may have seemed previously impossible to achieve have and will be achieved. After all, Landing on the moon in 1969 was an extraordinary milestone. And today, we are even building a lunar base on the moon, which is something like a spaceport where we can launch expeditions to other planets such as Mars. I'm gonna finish my talk with a quote from Robert Goddard, often considered the father of modern rocketry. It has often proved true that the dream of yesterday is the reality of today and the, re no, it is often proved. <laughs> it is oh, sorry. It is often proved true that the dream of yesterday is the hope of today and the reality of tomorrow. So, to make the dream of yesterday the reality of tomorrow, we need to continue to research, build, fail, and learn. We need to broaden our understanding, take on new challenges, and push beyond what's been done so far for us, the humans, to become a space colonizing multi-planetary species. Thank you.